Hi, this video is all about net ionic equations. Now, what is a net ionic equation? Well, to answer that question, I kind of have to back up a little bit to types of reactions. Um, in one reaction type, we've got a what's known as a double replacement reaction. Sometimes this is called a precipitation reaction. And essentially what happens in a double replacement reaction is you've got two ionic substances as reactants. Let's say we've got AB as one of the reactants and CD as another. Let's call A a metal and B a nonmetal. C is a metal and D is a nonmetal. And when you add these substances to water, they're soluble and therefore they will dissociate. And what that means is they split up into their ions. So A and C, the metals, would be positive. B and D, the nonmetals, would be negative. Now let's focus on A and D here. According to our solubility rules, let's pretend that when A and D get together, they form an insoluble salt. When AD, the insoluble salt, uh, sinks to the bottom, because it's insoluble, it's not going to dissolve in water, we call it a precipitate. And a precipitate is a solid that's formed in solution from a double replacement reaction. Again, that's also sometimes called a precipitation reaction. Back to this, the other ions, B minus and C plus, those are still soluble. They're still swimming around in water and having a good time. And those we actually have a term for, they're, they're called spectator ions. And a spectator ion is a dissolved ion that does not participate in the reaction. And it gets this name spectator because it seems as if it's just looking on. Now, let me uh, show you a before and after situation of this exact reaction here. Before we had B minus, C plus, A plus, and D minus, all floating around as dissociated, dissolved ions. Afterwards, we have B minus and C plus looking just the same, but now we have AD that's connected together. That result is insoluble and it sinks to the bottom of the flask. The net ionic equation is this here. It's what's actually changing. A plus and D minus forming AD, or a net ionic equation might actually look like this. Uh, a plus and then we put this AQ, this AQ means aqueous, that means dissolved in water, um, for the ions, forming this precipitate. Precipitate. Now, what's missing from the net ionic equation is the spectator ions. Spectator ions are kind of like the bus driver for an away game. If you're on a team, uh, the bus driver is getting you to a, an away game, they're crucial to get you there. Once you're there, the bus driver doesn't participate in the game. That's all you at that point. Spectator ions are like the bus drivers, and these actual net ionic equation players are the players on the team. Uh, the spectator ions are just the vehicle for getting A plus and D minus uh, together to form AD. So let's uh, talk about then the definition for a net ionic equation. It's this. It's a balanced equation showing only reactants and products for a precipitation reaction, and there are no spectator ions involved. So let's do an example problem here. It says write the net ionic equation when NaBr and AgNO3 are mixed together. Watch this step-by-step -step process. The first step is to write NaBr and AgNO3. The second step is to check their solubility. In order for this kind of reaction to happen, they have to both be soluble. So I use table six, that's the solubility guidelines or solubility rules, and I find that NaBr is soluble. The reason for that is Na is a group one ion. So all group one ion substances are soluble. So here's what I do. I write a little s, which means soluble, above the uh, formula, and I put it in a circle. This is just my own uh, style. Uh, you might want to just put a check mark. Whatever is uh, good for you is good for this. Um, and then you want to check the solubility of the other substance. So this is AgNO3. All nitrates are soluble. So AgNO3 is also soluble. So this is good news. This is an indication that this reaction will happen. You need to have both of the reactants soluble. But in order for a reaction to happen, you need one other thing to be true. One of the products has to be insoluble. And that's the precipitate. Now we have to figure out what the products are, and in double replacement reactions, what always happens is the positives switch places. 
but you have to look at the charges for the positives and negatives to make sure you're coming up with the right formulas for the two products. I've chosen this one to start because everything has a either plus one or minus one charge. Na has a plus one charge, Br has a minus one, Ag has a plus one, and NO3 has a minus one. So the swap on this is going to seem easier than it is if the charges were jumbled up. If they were different, you'd have to look at the charges to make sure you're coming up with the right uh, formula for the products on this side. So here's one formula for uh, product, NaNO3. That's what happens when I take Na and put it with NO3. Now this is the correct formula because again, I'm just kind of writing these off to the side here, you wouldn't actually include them. Uh, they've got a plus one and a minus one charge, so that cancels out. The other one would be AgBr, plus one and minus one on that one as well. Again, I'm just writing this little because it's not part of my actual equation, it's just, just me kind of putting these notes in just to think about. Now that I've done that, I want to check the solubility of my two products. Well, this one's definitely soluble. It's got a group one ion and it has a nitrate. But AgBr, group 17 ions, are soluble unless they're with Ag. So that means AgBr is insoluble. This is the precipitate. The next step is going to be to break all of these soluble substances into their ions. This is a process called dissociation, and it's a good step in any net ionic equation to kind of break up anything that will actually break up in water into its ions. You can see how this uh, would physically work out uh, at a particle level. So let's start with NaBr. If I break these into its ions, I get Na plus, and I also get Br minus. Uh, with AgNO3, I would get Ag plus and NO3 minus. On the right side, I have, this is also soluble, so I'm going to break this up, Na plus and NO3 minus. And then I'm going to leave AgBr together. And the reason for that is because it's insoluble, and therefore it's going to stay together. That's the thing that's going to sink to the bottom of the beaker flask. Now, the one thing I've left off of this is to put in AQ, the letters AQ, which mean aqueous, behind anything that has uh, a charge. So AQ there, AQ here, AQ, and all the way down. Okay. Now to get our net ionic equation, I just want to cross off anything that's a spectator ion. Now, How do I know what the spectator ions are? Well, they're the ions that are going to show up unchanged. Uh, Na plus Aq and Na plus Aq, gone, spectator ion. It's there, but it's not going to make it into our net ionic equation. Uh, what's the other spectator ion? NO3 minus. So whatever I haven't crossed off is my net ionic equation, so I can just write that down here. Br minus Aq plus Ag plus Aq makes... AgBr, oh, and I left something off. For the precipitate, you want to put uh, S in parentheses behind it, and that means solid. Sometimes you'll also see PPT, which means precipitate. It doesn't mean PowerPoint, it means precipitate. So that's a, a good example of a net ionic equation problem. Let's do one more. See if you can pause this video and try this one on your own. I did pop up the uh, solubility guidelines here, so if you need to check solubilities for things, it's right here on the, the screen. Um, but here's how you do this. Calcium carbonate. Calcium is Ca with a 2 plus charge. Carbonate is CO3 with a 2 minus charge. So calcium carbonate together is going to be CaCO3. Uh, it's combined with copper 2 sulfate. Copper 2 is Cu2 plus and sulfate is SO4 2 minus. Then says write the net ionic equation. All right, so we're going to combine these two things. CuSO4. First step is always to check the solubility of your two reactants. If they're both soluble, that's good. If one or both of them is insoluble, there is no reaction, and you would just literally write no reaction. Um, so CaCO3, that's carbonate, is insoluble unless it's with a group one or ammonium. Uh-oh, this one's insoluble. We don't even need to check the solubility on this one. The answer to this is there is no reaction. So I hope you didn't pause the video and do out this entire problem to figure out, uh-oh, didn't have to do any work for this one. Always be sure to check the solubility of the two things that are being mixed together. 
Um, so let's do one more then, one that'll actually happen this time. This says lead two nitrate. Lead two is PB two plus. Nitrate is NO three one minus. And aluminum chloride, that's Al3 plus, chloride is Cl minus, are combined, right? The net ionic equation. Let's put lead two nitrate together. That would be Pb NO3 two. If you need some help on how to put together the formula for something like that, uh, do a quick search for uh, writing ionic formulas um, or binary ionic compounds or uh, there's lots of videos. So just check out unit E stuff. Um, the other one, Aluminum chloride is going to be AlCl3. Okay, now, before I go further, just like on the last problem, I'm going to check to see if these are soluble. Nitrates are always soluble. See here? Nitrates, soluble always. So that's soluble. Uh, this is a halide. Halides are soluble unless they're with silver, mercury, or lead. This is aluminum, so that means that's soluble. So on the other side, I want to flip the positives. So that means Al3 plus is going to get together with NO3 minus, so I will have Al NO3 3. That's gonna be soluble too, because nitrates are always soluble. The other one is gonna be Pb2 plus with Cl minus, so that's PbCl2. PbCl2 is insoluble. Halides are soluble unless it's with Pb. So this is my precipitate. Now the next step here is actually to make sure that this equation is balanced. And I see that I have two nitrates on the left, but three on the right. So I want to make these both six. So I do that by putting a three here, three times two is six, a two here, two times three is six. And then I just have to fix my leads. There's three leads here, so three. There's two aluminums here, so two. And then finally check the chlorides, two times three is six, three times two is six. Um, okay, so now that this is balanced, I want to go and break out anything that's soluble. And this is gonna take a little bit of room, so here I go. Three Pb2 plus ions. I'm gonna skip the aqueous just to save some room on the screen here, but I would write Aq behind that. And then, how many nitrate ions do I have? Well, this is a nitrate ion here. I've got two times three. So that means I have six nitrate ions. They're all separately floating around. Six NO3s. Keep going. I've got two aluminum three plus ions and I have six chloride ions. Three times two is six. So six Cl minus ions. That's the left side. And again, on your paper, maybe you'd have AQ behind all of these, but sometimes it starts to get a little crazy. On the right side, I've got two aluminum three plus ions. By the way, this should match. This is a spectator ion here. Um, I also have six nitrate ions. Again, this should match over here. And then I'm going to leave three PbCl2 alone, and that'll stay as a solid. Now, to get the net ionic equation, I just want to cross off anything that is a spectator ion. And so that leaves me with this. Three Pb2 plus Aq plus 6Cl minus Aq makes 3PbCl2 solid. Now there is one more thing. I know this video is getting pretty long. There is one more thing. Look at the coefficients here. 3, 6, and 3. They can all be divided by 3. That gives you 1 Pb2 plus Aq plus 2 Cl minus, making PbCl2 solid. That's the actual net ionic equation. Now, I have a great uh, video coming up that's got just a bunch of example problems, uh, maybe more than you think you need with these. But net ionic equations are powerful because it shows us what's actually going on in precipitation reactions. There's a lot going on with these, and I wouldn't blame you if after this video you're feeling a little overwhelmed. There's lots of resources out there uh, that you can use. I'm one of them. So if you have some questions on this video, just comment down below and I'll be sure to read it and try to reply to you. Thank you.